Disclaimer, this video is for Haley. I only represent my own opinions and I am not by any means a professional, a scientist, or a dietitian yet. So if you're going to do this by yourself, make sure that you consult a professional and that you take protective measures and stop if it feels like something is wrong. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. This is a myth. It has been propagated by my coaches, physicians, doctors, the school system, dietitians, everywhere says the most important thing that you can do is eat breakfast at the beginning of the day. This, they say, increases your metabolism for the rest of the day, helps you feel energetic, and helps you wake up. That may or may not be true depending on your body type, your habits, and what you want to get out of whatever you are doing. However, there is more than one option to live a healthy lifestyle. How you want to live your life does not need to be the same as everyone else for you to be healthy. These bodies are extremely capable machines that don't run on just one fuel type. And I'm here to explain to you today why fasting is effective. Intermittent fasting or prolonged fasting in my case can have benefits towards the user. Especially if we know what our physical goals are and how we feel. Last video, I didn't eat for 60 hours. Why? It wasn't because I felt like starving myself or I suddenly wanted to participate in the Ramadan. It wasn't because I just didn't feel like eating. Who doesn't feel like eating? However, speaking of the Ramadan, I did get my first clue towards fasting in Saudi Arabia where I really just didn't feel I needed to eat as much as I did in Canada. Whether it was because of the hot weather, because I was stressed out from a month of traveling, or because I was just so relaxed at the hotels in Dubai. I don't know, but I ate four meals total in the four days I spent there. So after I came back to Canada, I thought why I did not eat for those last 60 hours. I never found my answer. Instead, I found a different lifestyle, a different diet plan that may affect you or me differently. I'm in nutrition sciences right now, and well, what better way than studying the entire human body system than using your own body and experiencing what others have described. So I searched up a few studies, and in the middle of my research, one of my favorite YouTube channels discussed the difference between fasting and dieting. I'll definitely link that in the description so you can take a look at it too. And a friend of mine recommended to me The Fast Diet, which is a book about fasting. So the book that was recommended to me, The Fast Diet, which I referenced briefly in my previous video, that consists of five days of regular diet and two days of fasting. The regular diet days, you can eat whatever you want, the two fasting days is just that. You have 48 hours where you don't eat. When I did the research myself, I couldn't convince myself that just two days was enough. A lot of the studies on prolonged fasting were around four days, but a minimum of three days. I wasn't sure that I could hold four days and I had a barbecue coming up. So I decided 60 hours, considering that I was going to the gym, and burning energy, getting rid of the glucose in my body, it was probably enough because my body entered ketosis around the second day. When it comes to dieting, find a diet that is easy for yourself to keep doing and to do on a consistent basis. Consistency is key. And these diets showed numerous benefits. Neurogenesis, prolonged lifespan of neurons, decreased biomarkers or risks of aging, diabetes, cancer and cardiovascular disease, lowered IGF-1, increased human growth hormone, naturally, no steroids, decrease in insulin production and increase in insulin sensitivity. That'll be important for working out or if you have a history of type 2 diabetes in your family. It also leads to increased cognitive performance, decreased reaction time, increased stress resistance, and increased longevity. The TLDR is Fasting makes you smarter, build muscle faster, lose fat faster, make you less prone to hereditary diseases and less prone to old age diseases, including mental diseases such as dementia, and it lowers the risk of diabetes and cardiovascular disease while prolonging your life. Why are people jumping into the bandwagon of fasting? 
To be honest, since they both require immense amounts of willpower, dieting and fasting really aren't so different. In fact, there are studies that show fasting might be easier than dieting because decreasing the caloric intake that you have decreases your metabolism and is a lot more painful than fasting for two or three days which actually increases your metabolism while the actual hunger or the ghrelin levels of your body decreases. It becomes less sensitive to ghrelin the longer you're into the fast to a point where you might not even really feel hungry except that certain spikes which your body is used to because of breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Another thing is that fasting is simple. There's no need for meal prep. There's no need to buy special foods and there's no need to eat at certain time intervals throughout the day. Anyways, besides food choices, fasting is less taxing on your body, as I said, because of the ghrelin levels, but also it may increase your metabolism rather than decrease it like caloric restriction diet. There are a few theories as to why, but if you're like me, you're a bit skeptical at this point. Because when I read that research, it made no sense in my head. Why is it that if you decrease the amount of calories by only 25%, your body overreacts and cuts your metabolism quickly? Whereas if you have no food whatsoever, your body would say, I need to increase metabolism. But as I got more into the research, I realized, from an evolutionary standpoint, think of it this way. When there's a decrease in the supply of food, naturally you would eat less. For example, let's say we're talking about farmers or the first agricultural societies. If you had a bad harvest, you had to ration your food. And so your body quickly reacts and cuts down the metabolism. You feel cold, you get the shivers, but eventually your body gets used to the lower metabolism rate. But this doesn't help you burn fat. All this does is it lowers your metabolism decreasing the amount of energy that you can use and any excess energy instead gets stored as fat. How is fasting different? Well, think of it this way. If you were on the African safari and you're a hunter tribe, the only calories that you get are from game and from your prey. If you did not have any food for the last day and your body decided to cut your metabolism down to 10% of what you had the day before, would you be able to chase down game? Would you be able to hunt? Would you even have the mental alertness to hunt for berries? Probably not. As you know, sometimes when you go on caloric restricted diet, your mind gets foggy and you're just always tired and cold and you don't want to do anything but stay in bed and watch Netflix. But your body is smarter than that. It knows if you have had no calories in the last few days, you need your metabolism to be working, to be burning fat as an energy source while keeping your muscles protected so you can hunt and forage. This would explain why there is a spike in your metabolism during the second or third day of the fast. It also explains why some people, and mice included, in the fasting stages will have improved cognition, reaction time, and short-term processing ability. It's not that your IQ increases or you become smarter somehow, but rather your brain gets more alert on to new things. What is that red berry over there? Or I think I saw something move in that bush. These are extremely important survival instincts that your body and your brain already have built in. Now, how does metabolism actually increase if you've had no caloric intake? This is achieved through the decrease in the amount of insulin in your body. I'll explain the effects of insulin further in another video, but essentially what happens is when you decrease insulin, your body's insulin sensitive lipase goes up. This lipase is an enzyme that breaks down fat in order to extract energy. These fatty acids get transported to your liver and it undergoes ketogenesis. In ketosis, your body uses fat and makes them into ketones in order to feed your brain and your heart and your muscles. If you ask anyone who's on ketosis how they feel about their energy source, they might describe it as more gentle where you don't have blood sugar spikes or anything like that, or they might describe it as a smoother energy source. In fact, there are some studies that suggest it might run smoother on ketones than even on glucose. And also, there's another benefit to fasting, especially prolonged fasting. If you ask any coffee addict, your body will need more and more caffeine in order to feel the same effects. And this is true for insulin as well as for caffeine. The more that your pancreas creates as a response to carbohydrates, the more your muscles need to become responsive 
to insulin. This limitation of insulin actually helps your body. It decreases your body's resistance to insulin and therefore increases the sensitivity of your cells, your muscles, to insulin itself. For those of you who are worried about the effects of fasting on your workouts, on your gains, Staz, that's you, don't worry. Fasting also increases the production of your body's human growth hormone. And this naturally increases muscle growth. Now the reason why your body creates HGH or human growth hormone is that your body wants to preserve muscle mass when possible. Going back to the African safari example, if your body's muscle fibers are deteriorating rather than being maintained, how are you going to be able to hunt? This is why when fasting, your body goes into ketosis after burning through all of your glucose stores rather than going into gluconeogenesis, which is the use of protein either through the muscle or through ingested protein in order to produce glucose for your body to use. It is in this process that your body catabolizes your muscles and it is not ketosis that actually burns the muscle itself. Thus, when you're fasting for two to three days, you don't really lose a lot of muscle. But let me make this clear, you will lose some muscle mass. Of course, the proportion has been, sh has been shown in a lot of studies is that most of the weight that you lose while fasting is not through muscle loss, but through fat loss. When you're fasting or dieting, your goal is probably to lose fat. Another thing towards your gains is that the decrease of the body's resistance to insulin can actually increase your muscle growth because insulin is very important for not only moving glucose between cells from the blood, but also proteins or BCAAs. The increased insulin sensitivity of your muscles can increase the growth of your muscles because it lets creatine, glucose, and protein more freely enter your muscle cells. When you increase insulin sensitivity, that means the same amount of insulin can get more things into the cell, a greater reaction from the cell. In fact, fasting might actually increase your muscle gain after the fast because the increased insulin sensitivity and the increased HGH, which lasts for a few hours or days, depending on which study you look at, after your fast ends, increases the growth of your muscles. More nutrients are brought into the cell that allows it to grow. Of course, this is only going to happen if you're still working out in the meanwhile, which, take it from me, does not feel very good, especially if you're doing four sets. The third and fourth set just feels awful. There are also studies that suggest fasting gets your body in a state that lets it recover or a soft reset state. Fasting gets your body to decrease the mass and size of your internal organs in order to conserve energy. Tony, holy God, that's terrible. Not necessarily. This gets reverted at the end of your fast and any energy that you consume will go back into rebuilding, reshaping, and reforming your organs back to the size they were. In most of the studies that I read, it was back to full size or original size in two to five days after returning to a regular diet. This is because your body's energy intake will first go to those organs and then towards filling your glucose stores and then towards building fat once again. During this recovery period though is where the interesting science happens. A few studies suggest that during this rebuilding period or resizing period, the body actually fix or improve the cells that are already there or the organ itself. And so this has been linked to like a soft reset for your organs. This lets the body reconstruct more closely to your DNA or fix mistakes or get rid of some oxygenated species or cancerous species that are trapped deeper into the tissue that it hasn't been able to reach or has been protected by the healthy cells around it. This might be why fasting results in increased lifespan and decreased risk of cardiovascular disease. It is also possible that the decrease in cardiovascular disease is because your heart tissue is perfectly fine with using 
using ketones as an energy source and it burns cleaner than glucose. Fasting can also kill cancer cells due to the switch to ketosis and the lack of nutrients for the cancer cell. Although we're not sure why, it seems the cancer cells are more prone to using glucose and insulin in order to grow than they are to ketones. I'll continue this experiment for the next three months doing two days every two weeks of fasting and I'll see if this gets harder or easier over time. I'll make sure to have a final video at the end of the three months what I've experienced and if you could use this yourself or the risks of using this yourself. But once again I must remind you if you want to try this yourself prolonged fasting, intermittent fasting, the ketogenic diet or any diet for that matter please check with a physician, a dietitian, or a medical professional before you attempt it. Otherwise, you are putting yourself at risk of doing damage to your body could be irreversible damage. Thanks for watching. That was my thoughts and my research over the short term of my prolonged fasting experience. Subscribe to the channel and I'll definitely make sure to check back in three months and I'll answer any of your questions in the comments.